Hi you guys, it's Abby and Lindsay here today. Um, we are trying something new <laughs> that we really hope you guys like. We got some new equipment that allows us to film overhead. So we are going to enter into this new type of filming with a very highly requested video and that is how to do a full seat adjustment. So I need full seat adjustments on almost every pattern that I do on that includes a fitted skirt mm -hmm. or pants or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And we think Abby does too um, because well, we're going to do the full seat adjustment today on the Alina Sewing and Design Co's Chi Town Chino skirt. And Abby made this skirt already mm -hmm. by just grading and kind of explain what the fit was like when you graded. So, um, well, I actually I made first just made the straight size six. Okay. Eight. Made the straight size eight. Um, and then I um, basted together the side seams and my waist was way too big and my hips fit. So I technically graded down after putting it together. Normally when I grade, you know, I would do it on the pattern piece. Um, so I took in the waist probably about three quarters of an inch to an inch on either side. Mm -hmm. So that's like a whole inch difference that I needed between my waist and my hips. And then I tried it on for Lindsay and we both felt like the fabric was pushing out in the back below my butt. Um, so kind of like a flare, but not meant to be a flare um, in the front. If I And if I pushed it in from the back, then it flared out towards the front. Right. So yeah, clearly there was, clearly we needed to add some fabric just to the bum part, just three dimensionally, like mm -hmm. a little, I don't know, peach. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then have it curve nicely straight down from there. Right. And I think what happened with the making a straight eight based on your measurements, um, I think this is a problem a lot of people have. They get this little chart, and here we'll zoom in so you guys can see. Um, they get this little chart, and then they measure themselves, and then they fall in to a place on the chart based on some measurements that they took of themselves. And when I measured Abby today, we actually got a, a waist measurement of 26 and a half. So is that the measurement that you got? No. <laughs> okay. And I don't know if I've never had somebody else measure me. So, I mean, it's nice to be able to have. Yeah. And I think when there. we do it ourselves, we don't measure ourselves in the right place on our body. Abby actually is pretty high waisted. So when I, put the measuring tape around her. I asked her to bend over to the side and wherever your body naturally like folds over itself, that is your waist. So I think maybe Abby was measuring a little bit too Probably, low for yeah. herself. Mm -hmm. um, there is four inches of ease in the waist here because this is supposed to be a low slung, relaxed fit skirt. Mm -hmm. um, so if she measured too low, then adding in that extra ease, it, yeah, it's going to be gigantic. Yeah. So based on measuring Abby at her true waist, um, we are going to put her at a four. And then to determine how much you need to add for your full seat adjustment, we go down to the finished garment sizes. So we're in a four all the way down and you can see that the hip, the finished hip measurement is 38 inches. And when we add, when we measured Abby at her widest point, we got a measurement of 39. So we need to add one inches, one inch to her hip on the skirt by adding in like three-dimensionally just to the back pattern piece. So with, after we figured out all of that, we know we need to add an inch. We gathered all of our supplies and here's what you need to do a full seat adjustment or really any adjustment. Um, you're going to need pins. You're going to need some strips of um, tracing paper, which we have here. You need a measuring tape, which we technically already use, but we might use a little bit later if we need to figure out some math. Um, hem gauge, a black marker, a marker that's in a different color to make your adjustments, some tape, a clear ruler. And then this on the bottom is Abby's size four that we have traced. We marked the grain line. We marked the grain line here. We marked the pocket placement and we marked the dart. So all of that is already marked. Zoom back out so you can see everything. Um, so all that is already marked here. And then we marked the seam allowances 
on the side seam and on the hem. And we really only mark them for a couple of inches because the way you do the adjustment is you really only need to know the seam allowances um, through the widest part of the skirt and then um, through the dart here. Okay, so that takes us to our first step. So what we're going to do, and I'm gonna kinda of just walk Abby through this and she's gonna do all of the adjustments herself. Um, you need to make a line that is perpendicular to the grain line with the clear ruler. Um, do we wanna use this? Sure. So you're gonna draw a line perpendicular to the grain line that goes all the way um, through the side seam, I'm sorry, through the center back to the seam allowance on the side seam. Oops, I drew on your board, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh! <laughs> By the way, this is the Dritz um, cutting board. It's like made out of cardboard and it has one inch grid lines. It also has um, like some, you see these red hem lines, has a place to make um, bias tape and scallops. It's really cool. We'll put the link down below where you can find one. I love working with this because you can pin into it and it'll hold your pattern in place, which is really nice. Okay, can't really see that pink marker in, on the camera, so we're going to do this all in blue. Hopefully the blue. Yeah, is better. Oh no, it's actually dying. So you can't, <laughs> can you see that? Can you all see that line? Yeah, you all can see that. Um, then you also want to make like where the seam allowance intersects over here with the um, line that we just drew, you want to make a small circle and I'll show you why here in a second. Okay, the next line that we are going to draw, and maybe we can pin down the, go ahead and pin down the um, center back seam so we're no, we're super straight. Um, you're gonna wanna make a line that goes straight through the middle of the dart, um, all the way down to the hem. So technically it's going to be perpendicular to the line that we just drew and parallel to the grain line. So how do I keep this straight? <laughs> you go like this. So where's the center of the dart officially? Let's find that first. Can, you can probably see better where those two lines match up. Just pinch a little um, fold in the pattern piece and then you can draw, you can get the little leg started. So again, you're gonna wanna make the line perpendicular to the line we just drew, parallel to the grain. Um, we're gonna do the same thing that we did um, for the side seam over here on the hem and just draw in a little circle like so. Then we need to take our scissors and we're gonna cut from the center back to the edge of the circle and from the side seam to the other edge of the circle. And so I put in the circles because you have to get really, really close to the um, side seam, but you don't want to go through it. So I like to put the circles there just as like an extra little safeguard to remind myself to not cut all the way through and to give myself enough space for that little hinge here. It's probably easier if I do it from this side. So you just want to cut right to that line. So now you've got a little hinge over here where the seam allowances can um, overlap if you need, um, but the side seam, the length of the side seam never changes. No matter how much you add to here and take away from the seam allowance, the side seam is always the same. So we're gonna do the same thing for the this perpendicular line. We're gonna cut all the way through from the waist, all the way through down to the hem, but we're not gonna cut through the hem. So you're gonna have one piece that comes away. Abby cut through the circle, so I'm going to make sure I don't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's okay. A little overzealous with the cutting there. So yeah, you just want it to be like a little teeny tiny piece of paper there to hold everything together. Okay, so now you've got something that looks like this. So we needed to add, remember, one inch to Abby's hip. Now there are two sides to this skirt. This is only half of the back. So we're going to take that one inch measurement and divide it by two to make it half an inch. Half an inch is gonna go on the left cheek and half an inch <laughs> is gonna go on the right cheek. 
Okay, so now we need to take our strips and put them underneath the lines that we just cut. So let's just move that out of the way for a sec. And then I find it helpful to actually tack down the um, strips of paper so that they never move. So all we're moving is the pattern piece that's laying on top of the, of the strips. Okay. So you can see that we've got kind of like a cross in the extra pattern strips. And then we've got our pattern laying over top of the cross. Oh, that ever happened? The pin of my, <laughs> the top of my pin just came off. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, then we need to put this piece back. Maybe we need to move this out. Okay, so after we got the strips pinned down underneath, we are going to pin down the center back seam and the hem because neither one of those things should move. Right. So you wanna help? Get it on the corner. Move it up or down? Down. Down. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna leave this piece free because we're actually going to move this. But if you think about it, this is only half of your skirt. So you, this is like another piece. This is where you attach them together. So the majority of the fabric that you need to add to it is gonna be in this portion here, not necessarily in this portion. This is where your bubble butt lives and then everything kind of radiates down and grades down to nothing from there. But you can't really, on a two dimensional piece of paper, move one thing without moving another, which is why you end up with all of these weird angles. So the way that I like to do it is this piece is completely free. So I like to measure a half an inch from the bottom quadrant here in a line all the way across. Okay and you're going to line this piece up with this while keeping the center back seam still on that grid line. So you're gonna have to come down this way a little, then down this way a little, you're gonna have to kind of play with it. You mark these. And so see, you have a perfectly straight center back seam with an extra half an inch added in there for the center part of your butt crack, basically <laughs> is where it is. And then see how the waist is like not matching anymore. So now you need to move this piece up to accommodate for that. And then you put it in its place. All the while our hinge here is making sure that the side seam, the stitching line stays the exact same. So this is our new piece and we're gonna tape all of this together. So as you can see, we've added all of this extra space to the dart, but when you sew up the dart legs, you're going to eliminate all of that space. But we do need to move the dart point because now this is at too much of an angle. The dart point moved over, let's see, maybe half an inch. Yeah, a little shy of half an inch. So we need to split the difference of this measurement and move the dart over by that amount. So a little less than half an inch is also a little less than a quarter of an inch. So let's just move it over by a little less than a quarter of an inch, which would be right about here. Cool? Mm-hmm. And then you take your ruler and you draw new dart legs right down to that point. And then you draw them on the other side
and there is your new dart. Now you can also see that the pocket placement line grew and now it's at an angle. So we need to take this measurement, which looks to be right at exactly half an inch and we need to shorten it by that amount and also straighten it out. So let's straighten it out first, this line to this line. And then you can take it in by a quarter inch on each end. So put that on that line, new pocket end, new pocket end. But keep in mind with the pockets too, that just because they put a pocket placement line on the pattern doesn't mean that's the most flattering place for the pocket to go on your bomb, especially if you have a bubble butt, you may need to make the pocket bigger. You may need to move the pocket up. You may need to move it out, move it in. There's, you know, all kinds of, um, you know, places you can put the pocket to make it more flattering. So don't feel like this is a hard and fast place to put it. This is just um, the place she thought best for most people. But if we're doing all this work, you can tell we are not most people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've got all this taped down. We've got our new marks. We're going to take all these pins out, cut along these, um, the cutting lines again, and have our new pattern. So one thing we did forget to mention is that you need to redraw the um, waist cutting line. So you just kind of want to eyeball where the center of the seam is there. You can measure it if you want and be like perfectly exact. That's probably what we should do as, as we are teaching people. So it is one and seven eighths. Let's call or one. Yeah, no. What, what is that? One and three quarters. <laughs> where is the um, measuring tape right there? Oh, so a good way to figure out the half of one and three quarters, since I'm not so good at math, is you take your pliable measuring tape, your plastic one, and you just fold over the metal piece to meet one and three quarters, and then you pinch it, and that is your halfway mark. So, so seven eighths of an inch is half of one and three quarters. That's a neat little, a neat little trick that you can do with your um, measuring tape if you don't want to get out a calculator and you just want to get some quick fractions done. So half of that would be seven eighths. So you come back in here and it's seven eighths. Then measure that line up to the cutting line. And I was right about right. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit off, but Seems good. yeah, if you've been, um, cutting darts for a while, you can probably, um, figure just kind of eyeball it and it'd be fine. Okay, so then you want to cut that out, obviously along the um, cutting line, and there you go. Here we have our brand new back skirt piece for the Chai Town Chino skirt. So what I like to do from this point is write the pattern, what size we made, half an inch full seam adjustment or full seat adjustment, so you know what you did without having to look at it. If you're really OCD, you can retrace this whole thing with using the pink lines as your guide and only using those lines. You don't have any of this tape to catch on anything and you know exactly what lines you need to mark for your dart. You don't ever get confused, but that is like next level, like awesome. Yeah. OCD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. I hope you guys were able to follow along with us. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to show some pictures of Abby's graded skirt next to this skirt. So you guys can get a full visual of the difference between grading and a full seat adjustment. And hopefully that will help you kind of go for it and dive into this kind of pattern adjusting. It gets easier the more times you do it. Um, it may seem a little overwhelming at first, but you'll get it. Yeah. Anything else to add? No, I'm excited to go sew up my new skirt using the full seat adjustment and see how much better it how is. How it goes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks y'all so much for watching and let us know if you like these overhead shots. Um, we have some cool ideas. We think if you guys don't mind not seeing our faces yeah. and only seeing <laughs> our hands. 
<laughs> so let us know what you think in the comments and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>